Hey everyone, welcome back. We are continuing with Best of Beauty today with skincare, and I'm going to talk about all of the things that I loved, whether they're old holy grails or new favorites. This year I really focused a lot on calming and soothing the skin. I had a lot of redness, I had a few different laser treatments, and so a lot of my routines were built around healing the skin, supporting the skin barrier, and calming redness and sensitivity. Of course I still have my actives and my treatments and all of that, which I'll get into, and I'll talk about everything in order of general skincare application starting with cleansers. If it's your first time here, then hi, my name is Becca. My skin type is combo oily. Right now I would say I'm pretty normal with a little bit of oiliness, though in the summer I am more oily. I will say though in my 30s, my skin is becoming a little bit more normal in terms of the oils balancing out and I do deal with some sensitivity. So that's just some background for my skin type and where I'm at in my skin journey, but I do give recommendations for everyone here. I'm filming, of course, Best of Beauty on like the darkest, rainiest day of the year. So I hope the lights and the sound <laughs> isn't too off, but you'll have to let me know. Um, for first cleanse, I went for super, super gentle this year. I feel like I was more natural than ever in my makeup habits. I did mention that in my best of beauty makeup video, which I'll link below. One cleansing oil that I found really gentle regardless of what state my skin was in was the Peach and Lily Ginger Melt Oil Cleanser. It has ginger and pineapple. I think there are like fruit enzymes in here maybe. Yeah, it says it's infused with ginger, pineapple, papaya, yuzu, and sika. Um, this was a really cushiony, bouncy, rich oil cleanser. It doesn't slide around too much on your face. It actually has quite a bit of emollients and body to it. And I found that it broke down my makeup instantly, whether that was mascara or eye makeup or a dark lipstick. It really didn't take a lot of effort and rubbing to get the makeup to break down and it rinsed off clean and it didn't leave a residue behind, which is the most you can ask from a first cleanser in my opinion. So I'm almost empty. You can see um, I really ran out of it here. I would definitely repurchase it again and I think it's at a good price point for how efficacious it is. I'm wearing like the biggest sweater in the world and I feel like it looks kind of funny on camera. Do I look like a floating head? Oh well, here we are. <laughs> okay, I did not expect to fall in love with an eye makeup remover. To me, my cellar water eye makeup removers are all very functional products, but they're not exciting. But I did really like this and it's the Rene Rouleau Soothing Eye Makeup Remover. When I'm wearing mascara, especially if it's waterproof mascara, I like to remove my eye makeup separately with like a reusable um, cotton pad and I soak it in my cellar or something like this. This broke down makeup so quickly. Um, it is formulated, I think, for sensitive skins and it says it's a no sting formula. And yeah, they even call out it's for sensitive eyes and contact lens wearers. And I do agree with that. I never got any blurriness. I never got any irritation. I have sensitive skin, especially around my eyes. And a lot of times after I wipe, my eyes will turn red and that didn't happen with this formula. So it was a real surprise and I would totally repurchase it personally. One of the best launches this year, in my opinion, was Prequel Skin. And if you're not familiar, Dr. Samantha Ellis is the founder of this brand and it's all very affordable. It's in like the 20 to $30 range and it's all formulated with sensitive skins in mind. And Dr. Sam is also a dermatologist, so she really understands the science of skin. This one, I think a lot of people loved. Um, oh, another thing about the brand is that everything is formulated for face and body. So you get these huge sizes and the cost per ounce is incredible. So this is their Glenzer. It's a cleanser for face and body and it's glycerin based. So it's meant to be a hydrating cleanser. It's a gel formula and it also contains, it's 50% glycerin, inulin, arginine, oat, and aloe. So it has a lot of soothing, calming ingredients and it's a very rich, uh, it's a rich gel formula that has a lot of body to it. It almost has this like slippery quality that I think comes from such a high percentage of glycerin. It's definitely a morning cleanse or a second cleanse for me, but what I love about this is that it's a rich gel that doesn't leave residue on your face and it is actually really hydrating. It's kind of surprising. I feel like it doesn't strip the skin. It actually adds a level of hydration to the skin without leaving a film behind. So you're gonna see me talk about a couple of prequel 
things, but this is definitely up there. For my oily skin friends, I have an old but favorite cleanser. I opened a fresh bottle of Jordan Samuel Skin's uh, Matinee Gel Cleanser, and I used it over the summer. This is a really nice bouncy gel cleanser. The thing that I love about it is that it has a tiny touch of salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is actually something that can penetrate your pores and kind of help manage oil production. So again, I have to mention this even though it's not a new product. And then I got really into cream cleansers this year, especially when I was um, recovering from laser treatments like those Moxie lasers I got, I would actually double cleanse using a cream cleanser twice. So I have a couple to mention. Um, the first two are little baby samples, but I love both of them. I have the Delicate um, soothing cleanser and the goat milk moisturizing cleanser. The Delicate is more of like a light cream gel. The goat milk cleanser is actually like a creamy, creamy consistency. It comes out stiffer and you kind of work it into the skin. These actually are both kind of nice first cleanses as well if you're not wearing a lot of makeup. I just love how soothing and moisturizing and creamy they are and they rinse off and they leave your skin feeling really soft. Another sort of light cream cleanser, I would say, is the um, Ordinary's Glycolipid Cream Cleanser. The Ordinary came out with some really good launches this year. This was one of them. This is not a very stiff cream cleanser. I would say it's like a cream gel hybrid, but it's very gentle. It's great for sensitive skin. It's There's no fragrance. It's also the kind of thing where if I'm not wearing makeup, this could be my only cleanse or I might cleanse twice with this. And it's gentle enough to do that to kind of like lift up and melt down SPF and things like that. So again, a great launch and also a, a really big size. This is um, 150 milliliters, 5.1 ounces. And of course it's the ordinary, so it's really well priced. I think that's it for cleansers. I'm gonna go into facial mists. The first one that I have to mention is the NIOD um, Super Oxide Dismutase Saccharide Mist. I'm gonna call it SDSM, that's what they call it. So if you're not familiar, it's the mist that is like this. The blue color, I think, just comes from the ingredients and it, it's obviously a huge uh, bottle. It's an eight ounce bottle. This, um, I mean, as with lots of NIOD products, it's very sciencey, but their claims are that this helps with signs of aging, dryness, antioxidant support, and the look of redness. And it does this thing that I can't quite describe. It's first of all, on just the most basic level, it's hydrating, but I do feel like it helps my skin hold on to water throughout the day. It helps with sort of long-term hydration. But the most noticeable effect of this mist is that it brings down redness. For me, um, my skin shows that it's not happy through redness, whether that's irritation or if it's a food sensitivity that I have or if I'm stressed out, I just get redness in the skin. And I feel like this has been really soothing and really calming for my skin. And I, I have noticed when I don't use it. I told you you would see more prequel on this list. And this is one of the, the products that I was most excited about. I got to try a few things before the launch of the brand and this really impressed me and continues to. So this is their Universal Skin Solution Dermal, Dermal Spray for face and body. It's a hypochlorous acid based mist, but it also has soothing minerals. Hypochlorous acid has really blown up in the last couple of years. The Tower 28 SOS mist is a hypochlorous acid mist, but this is hypochlorous acid and more. So hypochlorous acid is another one of those ingredients that helps soothe and calm the skin. I think it also helps your skin with um, just barrier support in general but this is a little bit different um, it actually feels a little bit milkier I don't know if it's because of the addition of like a saline mineral solution and I do find that it's a bit more hydrating and it's a little less like watery than the SOS mist for example I still use and love both but um, this one feels like it just has a little more oomph to it I also love the mister it's a really refined mist. You don't get drops of water on your face. You're able to really get a light spray across your face and body. So this has been a real staple in my routine lately. The only thing I'll say is that for hypochlorous mists, you shouldn't use them with your antioxidants. I think technically this is an oxidant and an antioxidant would cancel this out. So just make sure not to use them in the same routine. I have a creamy milky mist that I picked up in Korea earlier this year. It's the Lab Probiotic Serum. 
Sara Cream Mist. This is actually the second bottle I've used. This contains ceramides and it is um, like a milky color. So it's a bit more hydrating and it's a little bit richer than your general fluid watery mist. I feel like this actually really calms the skin as well because of the ceramides. I think it also contains um, Sika in here and it's meant to boost your skin barrier. And I find that it really provides long-term hydration. It's also a really great mister. See, I just really appreciate a nice mister. Um, so you're able to get those nice thin layers across the skin. It doesn't ever feel heavy. It's just nice and lightweight and milky. And the last mist is the Surat um, Hinoki Facial Mist. They launched this earlier this year. Um, I've actually already gone through one and this is my second one. I really loved this for uh, like as a hydrating skincare mist. I actually also kept it at my makeup station and I would use it over makeup if I was feeling dry. Um, a lot of times hydrating mists over makeup can be a little bit too greasy and oily for me, but actually this just made my skin look really good. And when my makeup was messed up or I don't know, things were pilling or cakey, I would miss this on and it just fixed the makeup. I don't know how to describe it, but I also used it in my skincare routine as well or just carried it in my bag throughout the day. It has a Hinoki scent to it, not added fragrance, but I think because there's Hinoki in here, so it smells luxurious and expensive. This is a little bit more of like a skincare indulgence than a necessity, but I had to mention it because I really, really liked this lunch. Let's get into toners and essences. I kind of categorize them together just because they can bleed into each other. The first one I have to mention is a brand that's new to me this year. I got to try out some J Beauty, Chico Beauty, which is a J Beauty retailer, sent me a couple of things. And this is one of the things I immediately fell in love with. So this is from Desai, that's the brand name, and it's called their Oil in Moisturizing Lotion. So lotion in Asian beauty is just basically like a toner. It's like a liquid hydrating product, but this is by phase. I don't know if you can see here, there's like a line and the top oil or the top layer is oil and the bottom layer is water. So when you use it, you want to shake it up so that it all kind of mixes together. This is so beautiful for glassy skin, for deep hydration. And I feel like, especially in the winter, when my skin is drier or you're traveling, we're in four heat. Um, I don't know about you, but it's, I have felt the dryness in my skin. This adds real long-term hydration without adding a heavy layer of something occlusive. I find that just that little bit of oil mixed into the hydrating uh, formula is enough to give my skin a bit of an emollient boost if I don't want to commit to like an entire slugging routine or something like that, it's just enough to give me long lasting moisture. It has a, a clean, fresh smell. It doesn't last on the skin at all. Um, and yeah, I really want to try more from Desai. I have been really loving this. I opened this a couple weeks ago and I'm almost halfway through. I'm just flying through it and I can also do multiple skins of it if I want to, but I don't necessarily need to. Let me just, um, pour a little bit out so you can see. I mean, this isn't really going to do much, but you can see how fluid it is. And even when you mix it up, you can see little beads of oil, but it's not a heavy oil. It actually does feel like it's sinking into your skin. Skin. It's so nice. I actually wish I could put it on right now. This is a K-Beauty toner. I'm going to mention it because I do have a global audience, but um, if I can find somewhere that ships to the US, I'll link it below. This is the Koi Flow Lifting Ample Toner. This is a really rich, bouncy gel. You can see it's not as um, watery. It actually has like a jelly toner quality to it. The woman in Sephora sold me on this. She said, it's like Botox in a bottle, which of course I didn't believe that but I do find that it does create, um, because your skin is so plumped up by it, it makes your skin look more lifted um, because of how hydrating it is. You can see there's a bit of bounce to it. It doesn't run down my hand as quickly and it has this spreadable consistency. And I did find that this gave me really long lasting hydration. I wish this were available in the US. Um, it does have, again, this like, light floral scent to it that fades over time, but because it has uh, 
thicker consistency, it's longer lasting. The effects are longer lasting. And then I have to give it up to the Road Glazing Milk. This stuff is so nice. They call it a ceramide facial essence. If you're not familiar with this, it has a rich milky consistency. So it looks like this. It's creamy, it's milky, and I find that it's such a nice moisturizing layer underneath my moisturizer, especially getting into winter and drier months. I like to step up my skincare with more hydrating layers and like lightweight layers of hydration or milky hydration rather than immediately ramping up to like slugging or putting Vaseline all over my face. That just works better for my skin type because I am more congestion prone. So something like this is perfect because it's a very balanced application of richer, more emollient products without actually clogging the pores or putting something too heavy on. I also think of everything in the road line. This is going to work the best for dry skin types. Um, the moisturizers are great, the serum is nice, but to me this is the most special thing. It's also the most reminiscent of like Asian beauty milky essences. So I think that's also why I have a soft spot for it, but I think it's something that's going to work for a lot of different skin types. It's also great for sensitive skins. It doesn't have any fragrance, it's soothing. You can layer it on all of the good things. I've actually noticed when I don't use this, my skin doesn't feel quite as plumped up right now. So really enjoying it. Peptides were really all the rage this year, and this is another copper peptide serum that I really liked. So it contains copper peptides and amino acids. Copper peptides have this blue color, so it just comes that way. This isn't an added color. But this is another way to kind of treat fine lines and wrinkles, not nearly as actively or as dramatically as retinoids, but in a much gentler way. And I also really liked the delivery system of this. Like I found that this gel serum was deeply hydrating and it's something that slotted really easily into my routine. It gave me lasting hydration throughout the day, no added fragrance. It didn't feel like I had to do a lot of work to get this into my routine. So I just wanna mention that too. And this is the peach and lily one. I don't know if I said that already. Another high-end serum that I have to mention, I'm sorry, it's this Hodwasu Concentrated Ginseng Renewing Serum. It usually comes in like a yellow bottle. This is a limited edition uh, Lunar New Year bottle. If you haven't tried this line, it is so beautiful. It has that really intense hanbang ginseng scent. It's very botanical. It may not be for everyone, but I love it. It has this like herby scent to it. It's a gel serum. I don't know if you can see it right there. This creates bounce in my skin like nothing else I've ever tried. When I use this and I wake up the next morning, it looks like my skin still has skincare on. I can't describe it. It's hydrating, but it creates just the glassiest, juiciest, bounciest skin. It's one of those things where it's like, how did it do that? It's not like it has active ingredients in here, but it just plumps up my skin so nicely. It's very much a treat, and I think also a very giftable item personally. Let's move on to serums. I'm trying to keep this edited. These videos always stress me out because I know I'm going to forget something I loved, but on the affordable end, something I really loved was the Naturium Multipeptide Advanced Serum. So this is an extension of the multipeptide line. I think they originally came out with a moisturizer, which I like, and then they came out with this and an eye cream. And I like the eye cream too, but of the three in the line, I think this is the one that feels the most special to me. It comes in a really weighty bottle. It actually feels much more high-end to me than uh, you would expect at this price point. And this is a lotiony, creamy gel serum. It's a nice moisturizing layer. And even though it is creamy, it's not heavy at all. It sinks in really nicely. It's fragrance free. It also contains arginine and copper peptides. I think a blend of peptides. And peptides are a great way to help with signs of aging, especially if you can't tolerate actives or retinoids. Peptides are a great thing to have in your routine. And this has multiple different kinds of peptides. And even if you can tolerate other actives, this is a nice thing to have in like a well-balanced skin care routine. 
But more than that, I really enjoy the texture. I find that it's lightweight, it's hydrating. Again, it's a way to get in a little bit of moisture into a routine without maybe committing to a really hardcore moisturizer. And it's something that I can wear under makeup during the day or at night. Then I have another J Beauty kind of indulgence. This is the Nemo Homo Whole Plant Full Barrier Serum. And this is a ginseng based serum. That's another creamy, milky consistency. It's actually a little bit looser, I would say, than the Naturium consistency. And it has this beautiful spreadability. It does use the entire ginseng plant. That's why they call it the Whole Plant Serum. I love ginseng. It has that ginseng quality to it, that herbal fresh quality. This has the nicest emollients. It's actually quite a rich serum. It's actually even more emollient, even though it's runnier in texture, I'd say it's more emollient than the Naturium. So for me, this is definitely a great winter serum. Or in the summer, I would even use this as my moisturizer because it has those plant oils in there. And it's more of an experiential product for me. I like the fragrance. I like the um, kind of story behind this product, but I also love the way it performs. It's definitely an indulgence, but it's something that I've really, really been enjoying. So those are the main hydrating serums. I'm now actually going to go into treatments. So anything active that includes acids, exfoliants, or retinoids, I kind of put in their own category. And there are a lot of different types of textures within this category. Probably the most fluid one that I'm going to mention is the Naturium BHA Liquid Exfoliant 2%. So this contains 2% salicylic acid with some fruit acid. And I think this is a really nice alternative to the Paula's Choice 2% BHA. I actually really love that one too, but I know some people find the consistency to be a bit oily. And this one is much more fluid and liquid and it doesn't feel oily to touch or it doesn't leave like an oiliness behind. And I really like this, especially around my T-zone where I get a lot of congestion. If you are congestion prone, acne prone, you have a lot of blackheads, things like that, you want to incorporate a BHA because they are actually oil soluble, whereas AHAs are not. So this has the ability to penetrate deep into your pores where that oil production happens and it helps you control oiliness. So it's gentle enough for me that it's something that I can use regularly or kind of slot into alternate with my other actives, or I even use it in targeted ways, like specifically just around my nose or on my chin or things like that, if I don't wanna do a full face application. These are not new by any means, but I do have to give an honorary mention to the Dr. Dennis Gross peel pads. Um, these are the alpha beta regular ones. They also have extra strength and sensitive, but it's just such a nice balance of different acids. I think it has glycolic and lactic and a little bit of salicylic if I'm not mistaken. It's two steps. You do the first step, you wipe it around your face, you wait a couple minutes, and then you neutralize with the second step. And they just make it so easy. It's also really easy when you're traveling or on the go. So I just have to mention that real quick. This year, I made a huge step away from vitamin and C. And it wasn't even really a conscious choice. A lot of it was because my skin was recovering from treatments and lasers and things like that. And so I wasn't using a lot of actives, but I actually found that I wasn't necessarily missing it in my routine but I did include some new products and new treatments, new actives for hyperpigmentation specifically. I do think there were a lot of new releases around treating hyperpigmentation. One of them was the Mother Science Molecular Hero Serum. And this is a great alternative to vitamin C or if you're treating pigmentation, PIH, PIE, things like that. This contains, what is their ingredient? Malices, malicesin. Don't know what that is. What I do know is that it treats the appearance of pigmentation and it helps fade pigmentation and prevent existing pigmentation as well. So it comes out as this yellow serum and it's like a gel serum consistency right there. It sinks in nicely. It didn't irritate my skin at all. I found that it was a nice way to kind of get some of the brightening effects of vitamin C without an L-ascorbic acid. So that's a radical shift for me. 
Um, it may not be to everyone else, but um, it was just a really nice way to treat pigmentation sort of separately. Another product I really loved for brightening pigmentation was Dr. Sam's Brightly Serum. So they sent over a couple of things. They sent over their Brightly and their Nightly and their cleanser. I loved everything, but I did see the most dramatic results with the Brightly Serum. So this contains um, niacinamide, I want to say azelaic, yeah, azelaic acid, it's the second ingredient in here, ascorbyl glucoside, and some hydrating ingredients. And they claim that this um, brightens and refines, creating a more even tone, reducing redness and uneven texture for a grown-up glow. And I did find that was true. I really liked the complexity of this formula. So azelaic acid will help with bringing down rad redness. Niacinamide helps with, you know, a refine, refining the appearance of pores, brightening. And I really found that with consistent use, this did bring down redness that appears from sensitivity for me, like I mentioned. They recommend using this um, during the day, but I actually even use this at night and I really liked it. It's this lotion consistency. So I would actually put this on before my moisturizer, but it's moisturizing enough on its own that you don't necessarily need another moisturizer. And I saw really visible effects from this. Dr. Sam is of course also a dermatologist. So I know these are formulated with skin science in mind. All right, we are going to move on to retinoids. I actually also stepped away from tretinoin use, not entirely, but a lot of the year. Because I was having a lot of skin treatments done, I was trying out a lot of different things. I didn't want to put too much stress on my skin. This next item, I have to say, and I have to apologize in advance, is probably the most expensive thing on here, but oh my god, it's so good. It's the um, Medicaid R Retinoate day and night cream. This is Medicaid's blend of vitamin C, it's a vitamin C derivative, as well as uh, encapsulated retinol, and it's housed in a lotion consistency. Honestly, this is expensive, but it could replace your vitamin C, your treatments, and it's also moisturizing on its own. It's truly a one and done skincare step. So when I use this in the evening, I kind of, well, I'll go in with like a hydrating serum, not that you need to, and then I'll go in with this, but you could go in just with this on its own and it is so brightening i think it's just the perfect balance of that anti-aging that brightening that skin turnover from retinol and then the brightening and antioxidants from the vitamin c it looks like this and it's just this really lovely creamy texture it has a bit of emollients to it so again it's it's just one and done. It's so nice. And with consistent use with this, I really have noticed a difference. I feel like my skin, uh, I don't know, it just looks more porcelain, more even toned. It's brighter, it's smoother. I really love it. And I'm really sad for the day that I'm going to finish it. It's actually like almost empty here. And it's one of the best things I've tried. Medicaid, they know their retinols. I love their crystal retinol line. I love this even more because it has all the benefits of that plus some extra brightening. And I really did notice a difference. On the much, much, much more affordable end, um, another retinol that I loved is the Naturium Retinaldehyde Cream Serum. They're 0.05%. Um, retinol is a step up from retinol and I go through the details in a dedicated retinol video. I'll link that below if you're curious. I thought this was a great addition to the Naturium line. A lot of brands are coming out with retinols these days and retinol naturally has this bright yellow color to it. This is not an all-in-one, but this is a great treatment on its own. You can see it's fluid, it sinks in quickly, that gel immediately sort of melts into the skin. You will need another moisturizer on top of this. I don't think it's moisturizing enough just on its own, but I do find the effects are there without being irritating. So if you wanna step up your anti-aging, your well-aging, soft fine lines and wrinkles and all of that this is a great way to add that step into your routine and the nice thing about having a treatment like this is that you can slot it in with other moisturizers or add moisture or hydration serums etc as you need I just wouldn't include other actives in the same routine as this so I've got one affordable retinoid and one high-end retinoid I'm going to move on to moisturizers and I'm gonna start with Sean's favorite moisturizer because he emptied like 
six of these this year. I don't know how he does it. He goes through them very quickly. And it's the one skincare, he does have a full routine, like he'll use retinoids, he'll use sunscreen, he'll even use a toner. But when he's lazy, he'll at least for sure use Pharmacy Honey Halo. If you haven't used it, it's rich, it's buttery. Sean says it feels like putting frosting on your face. That's how he describes the texture. It smells like honey, and it is really deeply moisturizing without feeling too heavy or occlusive. Um, for me, it's a really nice winter or nighttime moisturizer. If you have drier skin, you might just like this on its own like during the day as well. And I can't say enough good things about it. It's um, Sean's most emptied product of the year. For a more lightweight daytime moisturizer, I really liked the Beekman 1802 Bloom Cream. Um, this was great for sensitive skin. It's fragrance-free, it's moisturizing, it doesn't pill under makeup, it gives me long-lasting hydration, but it's not heavy. It's just a really good, like, middle of the road, will satisfy a lot of different people kind of moisturizer. And that's generally what I look for in a daytime moisturizer. It has a classic lotion consistency. I actually just emptied this one, but it has like one of those airless pump tops, which I really like. You're not gonna see any come out, but it's a really good, simple in a good way moisturizer that I wore a lot during the day. Also, I lied, this might be the most expensive thing on this list. It's the Sodwazu um, Concentrated Ginseng Renewing Cream. I have just a tiny bit left and I have been savoring it. This um, combined with the serum, again, will give you the most bouncy, porcelain, beautiful, radiant skin you could have imagined. This is uh, on the richer side. Again, it has ginseng, it has hanbang ingredients. Let me just take a little bit. It is interestingly not that stiff or heavy of a formula, but it is emollient rich. So it feels really buttery on the skin and it does feel quite occlusive on the skin as well. I just love this Hodoisu Concentrated Ginseng line in general. <laughs> it just makes me happy in a lot of different ways, like the effects that I get, but also the scent and the ingredients. Um, yeah, it, it's a very nostalgic scent for me with the ginseng. Another moisturizer release that I loved this year was the Dermalogica Phyto Nature Oxygen Cream. If you recently watched my big empties roundup, you would have seen me talk about this. It's a very emollient moisturizer. It has a lot of plant oils in there. There's really nothing left in this now. Well, there's a little bit here. You can see it comes out as quite a loose cream texture, but it is very emollient. There are a lot of um, oils and plant butters in here, I think. And it has this kind of floral botanical scent that I actually really enjoyed. And I think it's my new favorite item from Dermalogica. It's definitely for drier skins, for nighttime use for me. It's not something that I would wear during the daytime because it is a little bit oilier, but I like that. And I think especially as I'm getting older, I'm enjoying that in my nighttime routines even more. But if you have really dry skin, I think you'll love that. Then I've got a category that I'm calling my barrier boosters. These are occlusives. These are sort of workhorse products that I turn to when my skin is chapped, cracked, damaged in any way in recovery from you know lasers or from breakouts these really are skin healers the first one is from experiment and it's their buffer jelly barrier boosting oil gel it is such a cool texture and the reason why i love this is not only for its effects but also for its texture it's so fun so it's this kind of like oil gel serum i'm gonna try to just get like one dollop so it's this oil gel texture that has some fluidity to it, you can see, and it's very rich. So it's almost like if you took an emollient like Vaseline, but then you melted it down, it's like that consistency. It's an amazing way to seal in your skincare or to use it throughout your routine to seal in layers as you go. I really love this because it makes emollient ingredients accessible to even people with oily skin or, or more normal skin who don't want to commit to that full occlusive experience. I think it's texturally really fun, but it's also really healing. So I found that, you know, if I was traveling on a plane or if I'm in a hotel room where there's really intense AC or heating, 
just those environments that really suck hydration out of your skin. This was a really nice way to add that extra bit of emollients to lock in that hydration into your skin. This is technically a moisturizer, but I use it um, almost as a barrier final step. And it's probably my most emptied product of 2023. It's not glamorous, but I've gone through like six or seven tubes of this. It's the Aven Sickle Fate um, Restorative Protective Cream. This is not your exciting, you know, edgy skincare. This is a workhorse item. It's a zinc based cream. So it has a white look to it. It's very stiff. You can see it's rich and it's stiff. It's the kind of thing that is like purely functional. But when I uh, was recovering from laser treatments, this is all I was doing was just slathering this on. Also, if my skin has dermatitis or eczema or any redness or itchiness, this is what I turn to. I also slather my neck and my decollete in it every night because that's also where I get skin sensitivity. If you have any of those issues, dermatitis, eczema, all of that, you'll know that a zinc-based cream like this can be one of the best things that you can do to prevent additional sensitivity or heal existing barrier issues. And it saves my skin every time. I think it's the zinc in it, but also the emollient ingredients. It actually dries down like to feel not so sticky or heavy, but it is by no means like a lightweight moisturizer. This is like hardcore. I've also recommended it to like my nieces and nephews if they have skin sensitivity. It's just, it kind of does it all. And then my last one is the NIOD uh, CAIL, the Copper Amino Isolate Lipid 1%. So this also contains copper copper peptides, kind of like this, but in a different form. This comes in the form of an occlusive gel. I just brought this with me on um, a winter trip, a ski trip. We went up to Sundance, I went skiing, and this prevented me from losing all of the moisture out of my skin or getting like wind burned or like chapped. And every night I use this, I still woke up with great skin and I really do a credit my skin to this. So it comes out in like this blue gel texture. Again, that's just the natural color of copper peptides. And you can see this is very much an occlusive gel. It's not as thick or intense as like Vaseline. It melts down actually and creates this barrier over your skin. It does a similar thing that the buffer jelly does in that it creates an occlusive layer, but this also includes copper peptides. So while it's sealing in moisture, it's also going to deliver those peptides to help soften signs of aging and just Oh, it just makes me have good skin every time I use it. It can be a little heavy for me in the summer. So for me, it's definitely like a nighttime or wintertime barrier booster when I need those extra lipids in my skin. We've got a couple of categories left. Uh, one of them is eye care. So I want to talk about the Ordinary's multi-peptide eye serum. I told you, peptides were all the rage this year. So this is um, a little eye gel serum. It comes in this like bottle with a pipette and it's just a clear serum. I really just take one drop, that's all you need, and I will kind of work it between my fingers and then tap it around my eyes. And I find that this plumps up the eye area, it softens and hydrates the eye area, and the peptides over time will help soften signs of aging, as I've mentioned a million times in this video already. I really like this. I think it's a great affordable eye serum at this price point. I feel like it plumps up the skin and it actually does give me lasting hydration as well. It's one of my new favorite products from The Ordinary, maybe even my number one favorite product from The Ordinary. I really, really like it. It is pouring rain. I think you'll be able to hear that it's so loud. The higher end sister product to this is the Niod Fractionated Eye Contour Concentrate. If you followed me for any amount of time, you'll know this is in my empties every time. I cannot be without it. And I've still never found a replacement that rivals this product. It's also an eye serum. It's not a gel though. It's more of a fluid watery texture. There's a little bit of like oiliness to it, 
not heavy at all though it sinks right in the thing that makes this special is that it deep puffs like nothing else i've used for me i don't have like sunken dark circles i don't have a lot of pigmentation around my eyes but i wake up with puffiness and this just like whoop, completely flattens and irons out my under eye area also my eyelids um, my eye fold changes depending on how much sleep i've had and i find that when i use this my eye fold is higher so you see more of my mobile lid on my like hooded eye area it's also hydrating on its own though i do like to top it with an eye cream or an eye gel or something like that but i use it morning and night religiously and i it lasts me forever even though it's a higher end product i just take one drop similarly to how i did with this take it between my fingers and that's all i need and again it's just something i can't live without this year i regretted getting hooked onto this product I blame Vanessa at Goals to Get Skin for this. So this is the Bio Effect EGF Eye Serum. They call it the Age Defying Eye Serum. You get a tiny amount of product in this, but I really, really like it. I have noticed that when I use this, my eye fold again is higher. It's just more lifted and the eye area is firmer. I actually have found that the combination of these two is like my holy grail. It, I think, contains growth factors um, as well as some peptides it's just a lightweight gel texture it is moisturizing enough on its own though I don't use this morning and night I just use this in the evenings because it's very expensive but you can get it at skin store and I do have a 25% off code at skin store that I think applies to this so I'll link it below but I'll just say it just kind of has that je ne sais quoi where when I use it, my eyes just look better. And you know, I'm 33, so I'm starting to see more fine lines. It's almost like what I'm realizing about aging is what you look like when you're tired in your 20s is what you look like in your 30s all the time. And then that pattern just repeats by decade or like every five years so again i'm not anti-aging i just want to take care of my skin i want my skin to be healthy and these two have really really major visible effects for me it is funny because i feel like my friends who are also in our 30s who haven't been into skincare at all now text me and they say i think i need to start using an eye cream <laughs> can you recommend one so that is where you start to see you know those early signs of aging um, okay, for a lightweight gel, uh, Dew came out with their Oracle Reviving Eye Gel this year. And I say lightweight, but actually this gel packs a punch. So first of all, I love the packaging. It's this aluminum tube and it's this lightweight gel, but it actually really gives you like deep moisture. It really plumps up the eye area. It's rich enough that I would even use this as my nighttime eye cream, but it wears beautifully during the day under makeup as well. And I find that it really plumps up the under eye area and kind of softens those lines because that area is hydrated. And then for a really rich eye cream, almost like the, the night mask of eye creams, I have the Make um, orbital balm smoothing eye treatment. This is like a rich stiff cream. I've used a bunch of mine actually It's very buttery you can see right there and it melts into this beautiful thick occlusive formula And I like this for nighttime because it is a bit richer and oilier And I feel like it's really sticking on my eyes throughout the night. I even sleep with an eye mask so I'll do this about an hour like before I go to bed, let it sink in, but even with an eye mask, like a sleeping mask on, I still feel like I'm getting moisture into my skin. Two wash off masks that I really loved this year. An old favorite is the Chantecaille Jasmine and Lily Healing Mask. This is my favorite skincare item from Chantecaille. This um, is a wash off mask, but I actually sleep with it on too. It has zinc in it, so it's very healing, and this brings out brings down redness like nothing else. I don't even know how to describe it because it has botanical ingredients. It even has a little bit of fragrance, but it doesn't bother me. It just brings down any irritation and like heat in my skin. And if you have sensitive skin, you know what I mean by that. When you feel flushing in your cheeks, I sleep with this overnight and it immediately goes down, it recedes. I don't know how it does it. I actually sometimes mix these two together. It's a weird little cocktail. <laughs> this is the event. 
that I've realized works really well for bringing down redness. So this is my magic potion. Kind of a basic wash off mask that I've just recently opened, but just want to mention because I've really been liking is the Sand and Sky Intense Hydrating Mask Tasmanian Spring Water. It's just a nice hydrating gel mask but I was actually really surprised how much it plumped up my skin. I'll use this when I'm sitting in the bath, but I've actually gotten around to using it in the morning too, if I have time. I like it because it, it's not a mask that dries down, so I can keep it on as long as I want. Um, usually I'll leave it on for like up to 30 minutes even while I'm sitting in the bath, and I feel like it locks in hydration, and it really does plump up the skin, and it makes my skin look and feel really glowy. And then I have to talk about SPFs. Um, I feel really passionately about this, especially because um, we just had a health scare in our family. One of my in-laws just had um, some skin cancer removed from their face. They said it was definitely because they didn't wear sunscreen growing up and they spent a lot of time in the sun. So I feel really, really strongly about this and about finding a sunscreen that you actually enjoy wearing. That's why I have so many different kinds because I think finding one that you like is really key. So probably my favorite of the year is the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Hyalusica Water Fit Sun Serum SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. It's just so beautiful. You would never even know it's sunscreen. Of course, it's a K-Beauty sunscreen. Looks like this. I love the um, pump on a squeezy tube and there's no white cast, all chemical filters, it's moisturizing, it's not too heavy, it makes the skin look really nice, and you would never know there's SPF in it. It's just nice and hydrating, a lightweight moisturizer. Another favorite is the Round Lab Birchwood SPF, SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. Not that different from um, the Skin 1004. This also has a nice lightweight lotion-y texture, no white cast, and has a creaminess to it. I think I like the texture of the Skin 1004 one just a hair more, but honestly, they're pretty comparable. They're not that different. For a lot of the year, I really liked the Naked Sundays uh, Glow Collagen Glow Mineral Sunscreen SPF 50. It's water resistant and it's slightly tinted. This is something that's actually very out of character for me to like because it is this like, kind of thicker putty texture. It actually makes a really good primer because it is pore filling. And I wore this a lot when my skin was recovering from laser treatments because I needed a mineral SPF. I find that it evens out the skin tone just a little bit and it's moisturizing as well. It was my favorite mineral SPF until I discovered the Isden Aerophotona Ageless Broad Spectrum SPF 50. These are both SPF 50. This is kind of like the opposite of this one. So they do different things. This is probably the best match I've ever found in a tinted SPF. It's fluid, it's a huge bottle, it's 100 milliliters, so 3.4 ounces, which is almost double the size, I think, of one of these. Yeah, this is 50, this is 100. So it's a higher price point, but you get double the product. And um, this match is so good. It's really fluid, it's silky, it's got this serum consistency, but it has a silky finish to touch. And it has more of a tint than the um, Naked Sundays one. Honestly, on most days, I would be perfectly happy just wearing this with no makeup. It gives me a bit of a glow, but it's not greasy. It's also water resistant up to 40 minutes and it's non-scented. It just kind of hits all of the marks for me. I actually was just able to work with them on a sponsorship and I was really excited about it because I fell in love with the product like immediately. I tend to like a serum -y fluid SPF just because it makes application so easy. It's so spreadable and you can reapply this and it still looks good too. I'm so excited because I finally found a place that ships this Korean spray SPF, my favorite spray SPF to the States. So I'm going to link it below. This is from Shingmul Nara and it's an SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. It is the best way I have ever found to reapply sunscreen. It has the lightest mist 
It doesn't feel greasy or heavy. In the US, I probably like the Kate Somerville sunscreen spray the best, but this is even more lightweight and not as greasy, which is really hard to find in terms of a delivery system. Although I also like the Soleil Toujours setting spray with SPF too. I'll link all of those options below, but I'm just excited because I found a place that ships this as a two pack for $30. So $15 each, it's a legit retailer. And um, I first got this in Korea and I was so sad because I couldn't find anywhere here that shipped it. But I love it because it makes reapplication easy. The thing about sprays is that you need to apply enough to get the full SPF coverage. This makes it easy because it is so lightweight and the formula itself is really lovely and elegant. So I'll link it below. Please don't forget to use your SPF even in the winter time. I also want to mention my Cooley Bar um, UPF gloves. I wear them every time I drive. I have the ones with um, full gloves and I also have fingerless ones. They are my most ajima coated behavior. I made a funny little TikTok about that. But basically, if you're driving a lot, if you spend a lot of time in the car, if you live in a really sunny place, um, even if you're just like picking up your kids from school every day, that amount of sun damage really adds up on your hands. And hands are one of the most common places that people do get skin cancer. So please be diligent about that. It's become habit for me. I actually even like them because they have a bit of grip on them. And so it, it makes um, driving less stressful like on your hands and joints, especially if you're doing like a long road trip, you're gonna be in the car for a long time, or if you have arthritis or sensitivity, it's great for that as well. And the last thing I have to mention is my trusty current body mask. You guys know I just recently did a sponsorship with them, but I had been using this for years before that sponsorship. It's been in my best of beauty, I think the last three or four years. Um, it actually replaced a hard shell LED mask that I used before. And I love this because it's soft silicone. It bends and fits to any face or head shape. I have wide cheekbones and this actually really fits me well. It's a 10 minute cycle and you can strap it to your head and go completely hands-free. With one charge, you get like nine or 10 uses out of it. Um, I've gone on and on about it, but red light really has helped me with skin resilience, with bringing down redness, with um, helping healing after breakouts or any sort of irritation. And overall, my skin just is more resilient and a lot less reactive when I'm using this. And it's an easy device to use. You never want to spend a ton of money on a skincare device, and they're expensive. You never want to spend that money and just have it sit there. I think of skincare devices in terms of cost per use. So this is a higher end product, but considering the number of times I've used it, it's cents per use because of how easy it is to incorporate into my routine. So it's something I recommend for sensitive skin, for well aging, anti-aging, basically for anyone. Um, yeah, it's the only skincare device I'm going to mention because it's the only one that I can consistently stick to. Um, in my day-to-day -day life. All right, I think that's it for me. That is the best skincare of 2023. I would love to hear what your favorites were. And if you have any questions for me about anything that I mentioned or didn't mention, um, let me know in the comments. I really hope you found this helpful. I hope you found that this spoke to your skincare needs, even if we have different skin types. And I think the exciting thing about skincare, especially in this moment that we live in right now with so much saturation is that you can find great skincare at any price point. Obviously I have low end, I have high end and everything in between. But if you're looking for something in particular, do let me know and I would love to try to help you find it. I have my best of makeup up already. I have best of body, hair, fragrance, and fashion coming next. So stay tuned for that. I'll link everything below and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye.